Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we are going to be making this little goat. And as a bonus you can also follow along um, with the same video and make this larger goat in the plushy yarn. So I will be showing you the pattern using um, the number four yarn to make the smaller goat. And you can choose if you want to make the smaller version or try the larger version using a number six bulky yarn. The smaller goat is about six inches, just a little bigger um, to the top of the horns. And then the larger goat um, to the top of the horns is around 11 inches. And I believe I used just over four ounces of the bulky yarn. So I would make sure I had at least five ounces and you should be okay. The yarn I'm going to be using in um, this video is Bernat Premium Tweeds. And it is called Aaron Tweed. And then if you want to um, look for this yarn, it is the Bernat Baby Yarn. And it is a 10 and a half ounce ball. And it is called Pebble, Pebble Dot. This is what I consider a no-sew body. So we'll do all four legs. And then we will start at the top of the head and we'll just keep on going down all the way, attach the legs and then close it up on the bottom. And then we'll have to sew on the muzzle, the ears and the horns. This is the crochet along, so I will be doing every stitch with you. And if you don't understand something I am saying or doing, there will be a 15 second drop down at the beginning of each row with the pattern instructions. And don't forget, if you like my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you will be notified every time I load a new video. And I think that is everything, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to begin with the legs. So pick whatever color you're using for the hoof. And you can start any way you want, as long as round one is exactly the same amount of stitches. And I am just going to fold my yarn in half, wrap it around my thumb, pull um, the loop down and through, just like if you're going to make a chain. And you want your hole to be just a little bit bigger than your hook. You're going to grab your yarn, pull it through, and just make one chain. And all that's doing is attaching the yarn and does not count as a stitch. And now for row one, we are going to put six single crochets into the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Grab a stitch marker if you're using one. And for round two, we are going to do six increases all the way around. So that's two single crochets in every stitch for a total of 12.
So increase one and two in the same stitch. Increase three and four in the same stitch. Five and six in the same stitch. Seven and eight in the same stitch. Nine and ten in the same stitch. And our last increase, eleven and twelve in the same stitch. Row three, we're going to be going in the back loops. So if this is where you normally go in, this will be going in the front loops when you go down and up through the V. And going in the back loops, you're going to be going down through the V and then out. So for row three, we're going to be going in the back loops, 12 single crochets all the way around for a total of 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11 and our last one 12 but don't finish that off grab your um, string from and pull it up through but don't pull it through those two loops because we are going to change color um, right now on this stitch now of course you can do this any way you like if you have a better way please use that way but all I'm gonna do is tie um, my base color or my main color to my hoof color just with a couple little knots. So just keep that nice and tight against your hook or the table, however you're doing it, and just tie it about three times. And then you can cut your brown. Then you're going to come up Grab your new color and pull that through that last 12th stitch. For rounds four to six, we are just gonna do 12 single crochets all the way around. So that is three rows of 12. And because I don't feel like I'm using a stitch counter, I am going to just count to 36. So that is um, 12 times 3 and then I'm just going to flip my marker every time I hit a set of 12 so 1 2 oops 3 4 5 6 Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's one row of three. So I'm going to flip my marker and keep on counting. Thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
23 and 24. So that's two of our three rows. And I'm going to keep on counting. 25, <clears throat> excuse me, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and our last stitch, 36. And then we're just going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch and tie that off. And you don't need this long of a string. This is just going to sit inside your foot. Whoop. Let's just get rid of that now. So you're going to need to make four of these. So I will put a screenshot in the next frame. Um, with a timestamp so you can go back to the beginning if you need to. If not, finish up your four legs and then keep on going and we will start with the next part. Okay, so before we start the head, I'm, if you're using the plushy yarn, I'm just going to quickly show you what I do um, for a magic ring. I don't know if it's right and it's definitely not my area of expertise but you're going to pinch your finger between or your yarn between your finger your ring finger and your thumb and then you're going to wrap it around your three fingers and make an x grab that yarn with your pinky just to keep it tight and then flip your hand over and you're going to go under the first um, piece of yarn and you're going to grab that back piece of yarn. You're going to pull it under and up. And you're just going to make one chain. Which does not count as a stitch. That is just to secure your yarn to the loop. So now that you have your loop. You're just going to put whatever your first round calls for. So for me on this one it's going to be six single crochets. So you just... Do it how you would regularly do. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you take that end tail and you just pull it. Now, if you're using the plush yarn, be very careful anytime you pull because it's seems to snap really easy and then you're gonna have to start again and now you're just ready to continue on with your second round now I'm just gonna do it my regular way so you're just gonna make your knot with the loop on the end Grab your yarn, pull up and through, make your chain one. Remembering that doesn't count as a stitch and it's just securing your yarn. And then you're going to do six single crochets into the loop. One, two, three, four, five and six and if you end up having a big hole like that you can always pull your tail that you crocheted over and just give it a bit of a t tug and it'll close that up grab a stitch marker if you're using one 
And for row two, we are just gonna do six increases all the way around. So that's two stitches in every stitch um, for a total of 12. So increase one and two. Increase three and four. Increase five and six. Increase seven and eight. Increase nine and ten. And our last increase, eleven and twelve. Row three, we are going to do one single crochet, one increase, and then we're going to repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. So one, increase, two and three, four, increase, five and six, seven, Increase eight and nine, ten. Increase eleven and twelve, thirteen. Increase fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, and our last increase. 17 and 18. Row four, we are going to do two single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 24. So one, two, increase, three and four. Five, six, increase, seven and eight, nine, ten, and an increase, eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And an increase, 15 and 16. 17, 18, and an increase, 19 and 20, 21, 22, and an increase, 23, and 24. Row five, we are going to do three single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 30. Oops, flip my marker. One, two, three, increase four and five. Six, seven, eight, increase nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and your increase fourteen and fifteen. 16, 17, 18, and your increase, 19 and 20, 21, 22, 23, and an increase, 24 and 25. 
26, 27, 28, and the increase, 29, and 30. Row six to nine, we are going to just be doing 30 single crochets all the way around. Um, so that's four rows, and I'm going to be doing them um, in sets of 60, um, and then just flip my marker as I get to each set of 30. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. I'm gonna flip my marker and keep on counting. So that was row one, and we're starting row two of four. One, or 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. So that's two of our four rows. And I'm going to start back down at one and then go to 60 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 
28, 29, 30. Flip your marker. That was three of four rows. So we're on our last. And keep on counting. So 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, oops, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. So that should be our four rows of 30 single crochets all the way around. Uh, row 10, we are going to start decreasing now. So for row 10, we are going to do three single crochets, one decrease, and then repeat that all the way around for a total of 24. So one, two, three, and your decrease. So you go in your next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up and through. In your next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up and through, and then grab your yarn and you're gonna go through all three loops on your hook. And just repeat that all the way around now. So that was four, five, six, seven, and decrease for eight. Nine, 10, 11, decrease for 12, 13, 14, 15, decrease, 16, 17, 18, 19, decrease for 20, 21, 22, 23, and our last decrease for 24. Row 11, we're going to do two single crochets, one decrease, repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. One, two, and decrease for three. Four, five, decrease for six, seven, eight, decrease for nine, ten, oops, eleven, decrease, twelve. 13, 14, decrease for 15, 16, 17, <clears throat> and a decrease for 18. Sorry, I don't know why my voice is just crackly this morning, so I apologize for that. 
row 12, we are going to do one single crochet, one decrease, and repeat that around for a total of 12. So one, decrease, two, three, decrease, four, five, <clears throat> decrease, six, seven, decrease, eight, nine, decrease, ten, eleven, and our last decrease is twelve. Okay, if you are just a listener, you're going to want to um, watch this part. So, we are now going to ignore this as our stitch marker, and we are going to make a new one up in a different spot. So, you're going to chain seven. One, two three, four, five, six, seven. And we are gonna come back down this side of the chain. We're gonna go around the head and then we're gonna go back up this side of the chain. We're gonna start in the second chain from the hook. So this doesn't count, this loop on your hook. This will be your first and this will be your second. So we're going to be going into the second one. And I always need to mark that because I'm I'm not, even though I've done this a million times, I'm never good at finding the right stitch to come back in once I get around. And I have that just a bit in the wrong one. Okay. So, starting in this second chain, we are going to go along that side of the chain and put six single crochets in. So, one, two, three, four, five and six. Now technically we're doing 12 um, stitches around the head, but because we are starting over here to start our um, 12 stitches, I don't want there to be a hole um, where we chained up. So we're gonna do a decrease in our last stitch of the last row and our first stitch of the 12 in our next row. So go back behind your stitch marker, one stitch, and you'll start your decrease and then go into where your first row would have started and do the second half of your decrease. And we're gonna call that one, number one of our 12 stitches. So now we need to finish the 12 around. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now we need to do our six single crochets up the top of the other side of the chain. So if you can find your first little V, you're going to go just above that and do six single crochets across. One, 
two, three, four, five, and six. So hopefully you've ended the same place I have and you should have 24 stitches all the way around. If you don't, try and adjust here, make one last stitch or one more stitch. Um, otherwise your stitch count is gonna be off for the rest of um, your goat. Okay, for row 14, starting, if right where I have placed my stitch marker from the previous round. You are gonna do three single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 30. So one, two, three, and an increase, four and five. Repeat that again, six, seven, eight, and your increase, <clears throat> nine and 10. 11, 12, 13, and your increase, 14, and 15. 16, 17, 18, increase, 19, and 20. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and your increase, twenty four and twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, and your increase, twenty nine. and 30. Flip your marker if you're using one. For row 15, you are gonna do four single crochets and one increase all the way around for a total of 36. So one, two, three, four, and an increase, five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and your increase, eleven and twelve. 13, 14, 15, <clears throat> 16, and your increase, 17 and 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and your increase, 23 and 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, increase, 29 and 30, and this should be our last set, 31, 32, 33, 
34. And our last increase, 35 and 36. For rows 16 to 19, we are just going to be doing 36 single crochets all the way around. Um, so that's four rows, and I'm going to do it in um, 36 plus 36 is 72. So I'm going to do it in two sets of 72. Okay, so one. Two, who thought when you uh, decided to start doing crochet in the rounds that you would be practiced up so much on your math? Okay, so that is two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, this is distracting me. Um, so that's row one of four. So I'm gonna keep on counting. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, and 72. So that's two rows of four, and I'm going to start counting at one again to do the last two. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So that's our third of four rows. And now I'm going to do the last row and keep on counting. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, and 72. Oops. My camera keeps splitting on me a little bit all of a sudden. I might, I'm just going to redo that 72nd one. Whoopsie. Seventy-two. Okay, now we are going to add the legs. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting um, six single th crochets through half the leg. And then we're going to do three single crochets between each leg. And just continue that around, um, except at the back, we're going to have to adjust our stitches a little bit. So I think we have two on this side, and then, or two on this side, and one on that side. Okay. So we're going to begin uh, row 20. We're going to put two single crochets into the next um, two stitches. So one and two across. Grab your leg and you want to have the knot facing you and kind of in the middle of the leg. Because when we um, are done, the leg will flip this way and then you won't see that knot. 
and we're going to put six single crochets starting over here on the right side all the way across the leg and the body at the same time so put your hooks through your leg then in the next stitch of the body you're going to put a finish your single crochet and then you're going to keep doing that for the next um, five stitches for a total of six across the leg so leg body single crochet so that's two and make sure you're going under both V's on each side so that's three four five and our last one six and then you're going to do three single crochets across making sure you're in the next stitch and not the same stitch one two and three then grab your next leg making sure the knot is towards you in kind of the middle go through one of the right hand side stitches and then through the body one two three four five and six I know it's kind of awkward if you're not used to doing this so just take your time take it apart and do it again if you're not happy with it there's nothing wrong with that now you're gonna do um, your three across one, two, and three, and grab your next leg and repeat this what you were doing. So not towards you, fold in half, put your hook on the right side, and do your six single crochets through both the leg and the body. One, make sure you're only going through the one side. You're not going through both sides of the leg. I just thought of that. Um, so two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Then you're going to do your three across. One, two, three. And now your last leg. Same thing. Make sure the knot is towards you, kind of in the middle. Go on the right hand side. And then go through the leg and the body for your next six stitches. One, two, three, four. five and six and then you should have one single crochet left and 
you should kind of start seeing how he's going to look. I actually got an idea for this afterwards, not stuffing the legs and leaving them out, kind of like the Disney Bambi style. But that might be a future item. Okay, so before we go any further, let's get the eyes on. And they are going to be going between rows five and six. So find your um, center loop where you started. So that'll be row one, two, three, four, five. And then just between rows five and six, I think I'm gonna use a pin because I like to go in a center um, in the middle of a stitch instead of in a hole. And then just use your um, crochet hook to kind of find the center of your bottom. And then just kind of see if you're centered up and down and it looks okay. And we are going to go, if you want your eyes close together and you're not sculpting them in, you want them to go three holes over. If you want to sculpt them in, you're going to go four holes over. So I'm going to go three because it doesn't look like I did any of them, but the cow and the chicken like that. So one, two, three, and you're going to go in that hole. There we go. That's better. And then you're going to do the same thing from your pin. One, two, three. And put your other eye in. Oops, I forgot to stuff it first. That is not like me. But I've done enough of these that I kind of know where it's going to be. So usually I would stuff the head and see it first. But I think that'll be okay. So... Let's put our backs on the eyes. And this will be exactly the same if you are doing the plush yarn goat. Um, the eyes are exactly the same apart. Oh, I lost my back somewhere. Uh oh. Well, that's a mystery. It's probably right in front of my eyes and I can't see it. But I just grabbed another one. Just listen for the clicks. And I'm still going to stop the head because we're going to work on closing it next. So just add your stuffing. Careful not to stretch your stitches, especially around the neck. You don't have to worry too much if you're using the plush yarn. I stuff mine really tight and they don't seem to, doesn't seem to matter. Okay, and luckily my eyes do look okay. Okay, now let's start closing this guy up before we put any more in. All right, if you watched um, me do the pig, you're going to know that this is going to be a little bit different than our usual counting. Um, our last row was 36 stitches, and we're going to just decrease all the way around. So logically, it should be 18 stitches, but because we are going to be going and decreasing um, and we're going to be decreasing in these corners too, where there may not have been an actual stitch that we would have been going around in. Um, our stitch count is going to be off. It's going to be probably somewhere between 22 and 26 stitches. So don't worry um, if your stitch count isn't the same as mine. As long as you are going in here and here, so there's no hole here to sew up once you get to the end. Okay. So I am going to count, but don't worry if I'm doing in a different spot than you. So we're going to just decrease all the way around for row 21. So decrease. 
decrease. So that's two for me, three for me. So now when you get to where your knot is, this V is your stitch. So you gotta go here um, behind the V and then way over here in front of that set of stitches. Because if you try and go in there, you're going to add a stitch. And when you do it, try and make sure the knot is on the inside. So in one side of that knot, and then way over to the other side. And then maybe give it a little pull. i got to stop counting because I've lost count now. So just keep decreasing everywhere you feel a stitch should go. So here, make sure you get down in, in here so that there's no hole there. Again, I'm at that knot, so you're going behind the V and then way in front of the V, kind of in front of your knot as well. sure you're decreasing where you need to. I'll do a final count at the end just so you know where I ended up if you want to know how close you are even though that doesn't matter. So around that knot, oops, little strings in the way. Take your time. <laughs> Feels weird not to be talking. It's kind of nice to have a break. <laughs> I'm coming up to your last knot on your last leg. get here, if it doesn't work out that you have two stitches before your stitch marker, you can just go over top of it because your count isn't really mattering now for these last two rows. But I'm still going to flip it just so I kind of know where I'm at. Okay, I'll count these and I'll come back with a count and then we'll do our next row. Okay, so I had 24 stitches around. That's with adding that little extra bit on this side. So logically now I should have 12 because we're going to do exactly the same thing. Crochet um, decreases all the way around and your number should be about half of whatever you ended on on the last row. So one, Two, three, four, 
four. Five. I'm at six in the middle, so I should be right on count. Seven. Eleven and twelve. And then that's as far as we are going to go. So you can tie that off now. Um, make sure before you do, um, you don't have any of your strings wrapped around your legs when you are going around. And that you can pull this nice and tightly closed. Because I did that for my pig. I had one wrapped around and I had to undo the whole thing. Cut the yarn, join it, and then try and finish this off again. But I think I'm okay this time. I don't know why the pig, I had to redo a lot of parts. So far so good on the goat. And give yourself a bit of a tail for sewing. The bottom closed. But first we are gonna stuff it. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out. Kind of hold on to that point if you're using the same as me. Nobody's actually said if they use a piece of yarn like me, so I have no idea if you're just following, you're using your stitch marker, your yarn as a stitch marker, or if you're using regular stitch markers or pins or so many different things you can. I started with paper clips is what I started off with. Okay, so first you want to stuff your legs and you don't need a ton of it, but you do want to kind of make sure, feel like you have the same amount in, your, in each leg. Ideally, you want this to be flat, but none of mine ended up being flat. That's the whole point of doing it in the back loop. And you don't even notice it on the plush yarn that you went in the back loop, so. Or I didn't anyway. And I'm kind of a beginner with the plush yarn, so that could be part of it. But it seems super popular lately. So I thought I'd kind of halfway jump on the bandwagon. So you can always make your regular yarn one. And then if you like the plush yarn, you can use the same pattern. Only thing I've found so far is I don't know my shapes yet in the plush yarn, so I have to make a little one and then try it out in the bigger yarn and hope that it works. Some of them has, not all of them. I tried to do some of my quick and easy ones, thinking, oh, they might look really cute done up, but I don't know if it's because I didn't really know how to start it and keep it flat. So they didn't really work out because um, they had the point on top. And I've tried so many tricks to try and get rid of that point. Closest I've come is get that first round really, really tight. And then your second round a bit looser. But I will tell you, when I use the plush yarn, I might redo 
the first round for half an hour just so I get it how I want it. Okay, is he stuffed enough? I think so. No. So we're just going to close him up now. Oh yeah, this is where I got around the pig leg. Okay, so... Just weave him in and out of your last set of stitches. And don't you don't have to be too concerned if yours look big and loose like mine. Because we're going to pull it. Um, the legs kind of, see that's how I did it. We're going to pull the legs nice and tight close together. So you're not really going to be seeing the bottom. You will if you're looking for it. But And if you're using the plush yarn... You may want to pull a bit as you go because I found that it does break very easily if you give it too hard of a tug at the end. Luckily every time I broke it it was when I was doing my knot so I could still it was still tied but I just hadn't like I had like maybe that much that much of an end to weave in which is doable. All right, so give it a pull. You ideally want it to come nice and tight and closed. Careful not to break your yarn. Hold that nice and tight and then get your knot tied down in there somewhere. I don't know where I want my knot. I feel like I'm gonna pull that stitch open, but that's where it's going. Now, if you haven't watched my other couple of videos, I'm doing a new, I'm tying a new way. So I'm pulling half my knot tight. And then I'm pulling the second half of my knot, just so I can get that nice and tight down at the bottom. So there will be a few spaces. If you don't like that, you can weave your your needle in and out and kind of close it. Just be careful not to pull these stitches down. And if you don't want your legs to spread open like this, you can um, kind of go around and tie the, in, the inside of the leg. Just tack it through one stitch and then they will come closer together. So if you're happy with how it is, just bring it out and up through the top. You can also go back down and forth a few times. You see how pulling that pulls the legs. Just depends. Be careful not to bend your back too much if you do that. Okay. So now we'll have to do the other little parts. I think I'm just going to do them as I have them written down. So we're going to start with the muzzle. And this is going to be a chain. So it's the hardest one. For me, anyway. So make your loop or your knot with your loop on the end. And we are going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're going to be starting in the second chain from the hook. So if you remember, this does not count as a stitch. This is your first chain. This is your second chain. And if you're like me and need a stitch marker, grab one and put it in there before you get started. We're going to be going down the side, a couple of stitches in the end, and then up this side, 
So we always have the same amount of stitches um, here and, and here, and then we're increasing around the last stitch and the first stitch on each end. Okay. So for row one in that second chain, we are going to do a increase. Our stitch marker. Or do I? I don't even know where I want it. There we go. So an increase. One, two in the same stitch. And then we're going to do five single crochets along the top of the chain. So one, two, three, four, five. And we should have our last chain left. And we're going to do three single crochets kind of starting on one side and turning it as we go. So one, give it a little bit of a turn, two, give it a little bit of a turn, and where's that? Three. And you should be around, so you're going on the bottom side of the chain you made. So now you're going to do your five single crochets across. One, two, three, four, five, and then you're just going to do one single crochet into that last spot or the first spot that you did when you started the round. Now if you're not happy with it, go ahead and redo this till you're happy with it. Usually I have to do it a couple of times myself. Okay, if you're ready to start row two, you're going to go right in where you had your stitch marker if you used one. You're going to do one single crochet and then in the next next stitch you're going to do an increase. So one and two and then you're going to do your five single crochets across. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you're going to go around the end. You're going to do an increase, a single crochet, and an increase. So one and two in the next stitch, and then a single in the next stitch, and then your other increase, one and two in that next stitch. Now you're going to do across your five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And then you just need to put an increase in that last stitch. And you should have 20 stitches all the way around. Now for rows three and four, you're just going to do 20 um, single crochets all the way around. Um, and I'm just going to go to 40 and flip my marker when I hit the first 20. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that was one of two rows, and now your second row of 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And then you're just going to tie that off and leave quite a bit of a string to sew that on. And we're going to do the ear. So I'm going to start that the same way. Make your knot with the loop on the end. Grab your yarn, pull up through, make your chain to secure that yarn. And for row one, we are going to do six single crochets into the loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Grab your stitch marker if you're using one. And for row two, we are going to do one single crochet, one increase, and then re repeat that around for a total of nine. All right, so one increase, two and three. four, increase, five, and six, seven, and increase, eight, and nine. For row three, we are going to do two single crochets, one increase, repeat that around for a total of 12. So one, two, increase, three and four. Five, Six, increase, seven, and eight. 
9, 10, and an increase, 11, and 12. For row four, you're going to do two single crochets and one decrease for a total of nine. So one, two, and a decrease, three, four, five, and a decrease for six, seven, eight, and a decrease for nine. For row five, you're going to do one single crochet and one decrease for a total of six. So one decrease for two. Whoopsie. Keep hitting my tripod here. Three and decrease for four. Five and a decrease for six. Now you're going to fold that in half with your stitches to the right hand side, your last stitch, and you're just going to put two single crochets across. So one and two. And then you're just going to tie that off, leaving a little bit for sewing. And then you will need to do a second ear. So I will put a screenshot over in the next frame if you, um, um, with the timestamp. And if you're on your second ear, just keep on going and we will do the next part. Okay, we're going to make the t little tail now. Which I think I'd forgot to show everybody, but just a little kind of little tip like that. Um, so make your knot with the loop on the end. And this time we are going to put four single crochets into your loop. So grab your yarn and make your chain one to secure your your stitches and then you're going to do four single crochets one two three and four Grab your stitch marker if you're using one. And if you don't need one, it's a little easier to do without because you have less little ends to worry about. And we are going to do for row two, one single crochet, one increase for a total of six. So one. And then an increase in the next stitch and make sure you get all the way over to that second stitch. Two. And three. Give them a little pull after each step, each stitch if you need to tighten it up a bit. Then repeat that again. Four. And your increase. five and six
and for rows three and four, you're just gonna do six single crochets. So I'm just gonna count to 12 and flip my marker when I hit the first six. One, two, three, four, five, oopsie, six, flip my marker for my second row of six, but I'm going to keep counting to 12. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then you're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and you'll tie that off. Now grab whatever color you're using for the horns. I'm matching my horns to my feet. So I'm going to grab my original accent color. And you're going to make your knot with the loop on the end. Grab your yarn. Do your chain one and then for row one you're going to do your six single crochets into the loop one two three four five and six For rows two and three, we are going to do six single crochets around. So I'm going to do just like the tail and I'm going to count to 12 and flip my marker when I hit my first set of six. So one, two, Three, four, five, and six, maybe. <laughs> so that was our one row of six. Our second row of six. I'm going to keep on counting. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <clears throat> excuse me, and twelve. For row four, we're going to do one increase and then five single crochets for a total of seven. So one and two in the same stitch for our increase. 
three. That darn cat tail. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Rows five and six, we're going to do seven single crochets. So I'm going to count to 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Flip your marker. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. For row seven, we're gonna do one increase and six single crochets for a total of eight. So an increase, one and two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. And for rows eight and nine, we are going to do eight single crochets. Um, so that's two rows of eight, so I'm just going to count to 16. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flipping my marker. Nine, ten, eleven. 12, whoops, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then again, you're just going to tie that off. Or if for some reason you want to go bigger horns, just keep going in the same pattern we just went. So your next row would be 10 and then, or nine and then 10. So I'm just gonna tie this off. Use some string to sew it on. And you're going to make two of these, so like all the other parts, I'm going to leave a little um, screenshot over on the next frame. So you can come back to the timestamp to start the horn. And then I think we'll be ready to start pinning and sewing everything on. All right, you should have your body done. You should have the mouth, um, two ears, um, the horns, and the little tail. So we're going to start with the mouth. 
Well, you're gonna wanna put some stuffing in there. Just enough to kinda keep it, you know, puffed out. That should be lots, oops. And I'm gonna have the tail to my right side. And you're just gonna put that wherever you feel is kind of centered between the eyes. And then just start pinning. And I'm gonna start kind of, you wanna pin it on this line under the eyes, under where you put the eyes for both the plush and the um, regular. And then just start pinning around so you feel like you have it nice and centered and where you want it. Just kind of keep checking every once in a while. Bring it up if you need to. I like to have at least the top half between the eyes and then let it curve however it curves. Put as many pins in as you think you need. I like to over pin just because it's a lot easier um, to keep it in place as you're moving around. And that's probably enough. And then I like to also pin the whole thing to begin with just so that I know what it's going to look like. I want my, um, I'm going to be starting at the top when I do the horns, so I want my horns to be strings to coming together to the top and I'm just going to pin them on the just between the first and the second row on each side. So just on the outside of your loop there is where we're going to put our first pin. Kind of right centered with that. And I think I had it two rows deep, but if you need to go three, kind of kind of decide once you get your we forgot to stuff that. Or I forgot to stuff. You guys didn't forget anything. So you want your stuffing to be right to the end, if you can. One little trick I tried once is to go this way get that up there but sometimes you stretch your horn a little bit so you got to be very careful of course a thicker hook would help what you want to do is have it thick enough at the bottom that it kind of stays out and doesn't fold over on you when you um, Go to sew it on. I thought I was going to be quicker putting this on, but nope. So do your second one. And you don't need a ton. Just a little bit. I'm trying to grab that. Even if it's just to get it started, that helps. Making sure, especially if you have a dark color of a horn, making sure that you're not stretching your stitches open by overstuffing it. There we go. That 
that should be good. Now we can pin them on. So again, just where your second row and your first row meet, strings to the center. And then do your other one. And that's the same hole between the first and the second row. And then try and get this one kind of even to match. And if you notice my one kind of curves a bit, it's only because I did this. There's nothing inside. But if you want to put something inside to make them stay curved, you can give it some garden wire or jewelry wire or um, pipe cleaner. Might be tough enough, I'm not sure. Just remember those strings are in the way so the horns aren't actually touching. And then for the ears, you want to kind of curve them a bit. And remember that you just have the two stitches. Did I finish that ear? I don't think I did. I finished this one. So again, you want your string up at the top and you're just gonna kind of pin them behind and in the same row. So you're gonna sew your horns on first and then come with your ears and you're gonna go in that uh, one, one, two, three. So somewhere between row two and three. Depending on where your horns ended. Later on, after they're sewn on, you're going to bend them down a bit. Oops. Yeah. Always the left hand side causes me a problem. So if you're happy with how he looks, then you're just going to start sewing. And I was originally just going to show you how to get started. And then I thought, well, I have to sew them up anyways to finish them. So I might as well just sew them on video. So you're just going to go down underneath of his muzzle and then come up around that row and come out and then you're going to come up the next stitch i think i'm going to come up there i am moving it around a bit so i probably could have pinned it a little more but hopefully I'm careful and keep watching. And you're going to go down the next stitch around a row if you can or grab a little stitch in that row. Come back up. Go back down and remember now you're going a across that straight line. Actually, I think I can get in that stitch this time. And then just go across, keeping in that line. Usually I can't do it this way, but good, I can show you how you should be able to do it. This one, I think I'm gonna go down around and come back up. Just cause I wanna make sure it's even with the other side. 
and come up. Make sure when you're doing this, you're going through both stitches of the V and you'll have a little stronger um, seam there. I guess while I do this, like always, I hate this part, but if you enjoy my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you will be notified every time I load a new video. Um, can leave me a comment or a like. Thumbs up, I guess it is, on YouTube. Um, also, I have a um, Facebook craft page if you'd like to go over there and share anything that you've made with me there is a um, post pinned at the top of the page you don't have to follow or join anything to go there you can just go right in there click on the comments or the photo button and you can just leave it in there and so far, I've only missed one. I'm not sure why I didn't get a notification for that one. But it was about two or three weeks later, and I just happened to see it looking at other comments. And I try to res respond to every one. Make sure you keep checking that it's all lining up how you want it. I'm almost to the end here. I'm going to go up that last one. Make sure I get that secure. And then you're just going to grab a little piece, if you can, underneath or right beside his muzzle. I think I'm going to try and get right in between those two. Nope, and I can't get in there. I'll go down here. And then you're just going to tie it off. This is a good place to do that half, half a knot if you can find the right string. This one. Get that nice and tight and then pull your, the way you normally would. And then hide that down under, inside, and through the back somewhere. do the horns and I'm going to try doing the left side first seeing if that makes the right side easier so I'm just going to pin that around I think I'm like I'm going to be making it three rows wide. Make sure you're even with your center. And you're just going to do that the same way. Uh, where's my... Oh, it's way in the back. I was going to show you about what it would look like with two different colors. Um, so make sure, since they are due to two different colors, that you are going underneath the horn. Otherwise, you're going to see this little line 
of stitches and you don't want to see that. So I want to go right there. And same as the muzzle. You can go down and up through every stitch. Make sure you're not um, bringing your horn base too far together and it's staying nice and round. These legs I keep getting caught up on for some reason. Back and forth. Take your time and try not to, if you're like me, remind yourself how much you don't like sewing. I got one stitch left. And then you're just going to tie off down somewhere, trying to get under if you can. I went around a round instead of a stitch, but I think it will be okay. And you're just going to thread that down and then out the back, fairly close to the top in the center. And get your second horn and you're going to want to match that up to how you just pinned the last one. Make sure you have about the same distance from the, ah, I just poked myself, same distance from the eyes to the edge of the horn. One, two, three. So this one actually has to come down a little bit, I think. It's a little tricky because they're in the round, so it's one side's a bit higher than the other usually. Don't forget, if you don't want to watch this part, I take no offense to being fast forwarded. I just decided we'll keep this in here in case there's someone that's right new to or has never sewn parts on before. I'm hoping that this is helpful. So you're just going to go between that first and second row to get started. And it, ah, see, no matter which way I go, I got something hooking on it. And then just go up and down through your stitches and around. Trying to keep track that they stay even. 
There's nothing worse than putting all this work in and then having a look afterwards and realizing that you ended up getting it crooked. Although sometimes they make for the most unique and cute items. Unless you're a perfection perfectionist and then probably it's going to annoy you. Well, not even a perfectionist, but... How do I want to go down? See, this side, it, that doesn't match up, and the other side it does, so we're just going to take one stitch down there. Careful not to come too far up here. here and then I am almost done. I think so. No, maybe I better go one more here. I just don't want it to be too loose. Actually, maybe I could tie it there and that'll hold that down. Alright, so I'm going to give it a tie. same stitch. I haven't been watching my camera. I hope that was all in there. Coming out the same stitch your last horn came out of. And then we're just going to tie it. And if we need to, we will pull those so that the ear or the horns kind of come up a bit. I think that's as good as it's getting here for me, or I'm going to break my thread. I'm going to just tie it a couple more times and hide it out the back somewhere. Now we'll put the ears on. And again, I like to um, start at the top. And I don't really need to pin these on because it's only two stitches. But I'm going to put pin them on right in this under here just kind of behind the horn. So just right here behind the horn. I'm even a little under the horn is fine. Coming from back to front. And then you're going to go in your first um, single crochet when you close that up. And I'm going to put two in. So I'm just going to do that exact same thing. Going in the same stitch. And 
and then that first single crochet again. Then you're going to go in the next round below. So I went in right there, so I'm going to go in right here now for my second stitch. And you're just going to go in that second single crochet. And you're going to do that twice just so it's a little more secure. And then come up where you just were. And then back out that second single crochet. Then just tie it off somewhere right close to where you are. So finally, that was the second, or that was the left side, and that didn't go too bad. And then I'm just going to hide that and tie very tight. Well, we're going to tie it again anyway, so just kind of hide that if you can and bring it out center back-ish. And we're going to take the other ear. And do exactly the same thing. And just go kind of behind the horn and under in that row that you stitched it on. Whoops, pull my needle right out. And in your first single crochet. And then back in that same hole. And that same first single crochet. And then you're going down one more row. So you were right there. So you're going to go down right here. And in that second single crochet. And then just, whoops. Hmm. This was supposed to be the easy ear. And then just repeat that exact same stitch around. Ending that second crochet. And give it a tie. And obviously, if you have a better way of doing this, do it your way. keeps coming off. And you're going to do the same thing you did with the horns. Give it a, I can't figure out which way I need to cross these. Try this way. Pull them in if you want a bit. Keep in mind it will pull the head in a bit. I think I'm okay with this. So then you'll just tie it and hide it out the bottom. this chair. Oh, 
Okay, and we just have the tail. So I think I put a little bit of stuffing in it. I know I definitely did for the bigger plush one. But you barely need any. Just enough so it's not floppy. Or let's see. Oh, I can't tell. No, you know what? I didn't put any in. I'm not putting any in this one either then. Um, I did put some in the, in the big one. If you want to have a look at that. That does have stuffing in it. Oh, I love this little goat. He's so cute. Okay. So we're just going to plop him on there. Actually, you know what? Let's do it like this. You can stuff him and do it around like you did the like you did the horns or I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to in and out the three stitches that we left so it's closed. And then I'm just going to stitch that right on there just like we did the ear. So through his body, through a stitch, through his body, through a stitch. Just make sure you're getting it even so your tail is in the center going above this thing. And then through the body and through a stitch. Before you tie off, make sure you are happy with the placement. I think so. And then just give it a tie. Or knot, I guess. It's a knot. Whoopsie. I'm going to do my little tricky thing where I, I don't know why I have a hard time figuring out what string to pull though. It should just be the other string. Okay. And there we go. And you just pull that in and out the bottom or somewhere. If you need it a little, um, more reinforcement you can go up and down a few times or around and around a few more times i forgot all about his nostrils so i'm just going to throw this little part in so you're going to come just above where your um row of chains are so this is one side of your um, chain that you made and this is the other side and you can tell by how your stitch your V's in your stitches go so you're just going to come to one corner just above that go around your stuffing a bit and then come up in the other corner leaving about equal amount of yarn on each side and then you're just going to thread one side and go down about however wide your nostril is going to be. So I'm going to go skip one stitch and go in the next stitch. And just come down under his chin somewhere. And then do the same thing on the other side. So I skip a stitch and then I go in. And then come down to that same spot. And then you're just going to tie them. If 
Try not to pull too tight because you don't want his nostrils to tighten up on the outside but that you just did. And then you're just going to thread them out the back somewhere. Careful again not to pull too hard on there. You can hold that if you need to. I left, already took my scissors away, so that's going to stay there for a sec. And if you want to make the little beard, you're just going to go down under one of these stitches, one of these rows in the center. Grab a couple of your scraps that you made when you were cutting all your ends. And you're just going to pull it up. Thread them through. And then pull back down. And you want them to be kind of nice and tight. And then you'll just give them a cut however long you want to make them. If you want to make them fuzzy, then you can just split the ends. You want to untwist them all like this. And then either brush them or leave them hanging straight down like that. Sorry, that's kind of a bad quickie, but <laughs> anyway, back to wherever I decide to put this back in. Okay, so I think we're done. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed making this, uh, these goats. Um, if there's anything else you see in the background, there's a YouTube video for everything except the cow and the horse, which are coming next, I think. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for watching. Happy crocheting.